So what's the difference between these experimental design? Nested design, partially nested design, split plot design, split split plot design, repeated measure, fixed effect, mixed effect model, random effect model and all that. In short, to answer this question, there is no difference or it doesn't matter how and what an experimental experiment is called that has nothing to do with how they should be analyzed their analysis depends on how the factors are is it a fixed factor is it a random factor nested factor or a fixed factor because these three different types of factor fixed random and nested they actually defines how the expected mean square for each of these factors and that guides the F statistics for um, for these factors so the p-values and F statistics they are guided by whether something is fixed something is random or nested or not that has nothing to do with how we call our baby so I have created these bunch of examples where people uh, use different names for in different fields. For example, the split plot develops in the biology field. Uh, for obvious reason, you can think of you have a big piece of land and whole block and then you want to split that into a few sections and then grow different types of crops there then it makes sense to call that a split plot. And then if it's in a medical field, you give some medicine to a subject and measure over time how they are doing over time. Are they getting better or getting worse? So subjects are repeatedly measured and that's why it's called repeated measure. Nested design is basically any factor is nested. So, for example, the instructor is nested within an university. Then it could be called as a nested factor. Mixed effect model is basically when you have random and fixed and nested, maybe all of them together, they can be called mixed effect. Random effect model, typically, if you have a single random factor, and then it could have a nested factor, fixed factor, then that model is called random effect model. Now in all of these examples that I have given here, they have exact same F statistics, exact same p-value calculations because their factor type is same. A is fixed, B is random and nested in A and C is fixed. And of course, you have the interaction between A and C and the interaction between B and C. Now, interaction between A and C is not possible here because B is nested in, the, in A. So, nested factor cannot be crossed. So, you can only have the two so possible interactions here. Now, let me go ahead and explain each of these and why they are fall under the fixed factor definition A and then the B is kind of random and nested and C is fixed. And in the next video I will show you how to analyze this experiment correctly using Minitab. I'll probably also show you a SAS video to and SPSS. Check that out. Now let me go ahead and explain each of these. Now think about these sites. Imagine that I am studying the northern part of the United States and the southern part of the United States. And I pick one of the states from the southern part, maybe Alabama or Mississippi or Louisiana. And then one of the northern part of the United States, maybe Minnesota. And from each of these sites, I pick randomly five different plots where I can grow soybeans or mm, corn, maybe two types of uh, crops. So then you can see only two types of crops, so that's the fixed factor. When you are saying two types of crops, that's the fixed factor. When you say you have only two sites, which is the northern and the 
um, southern sites then you have only two sites you're only studying only two sites so that's the fixed factor however I have probably a thousand pieces of plots in the state of Minnesota so within each site I may have many plots and then I randomly pick few of them for my study then that's a random factor and of course because these plots is from a particular site it is nested in that site now let's go ahead and check that uh, next example medicine it's kind of a little bit tricky to understand this now let me give you an example assume that I have a room full of medicine that can be just inhaled and then people get better after inhaling the medicine so they can go walk in that room for five minutes inhale the medicine so now you can visualize that subjects are nested in that medicine building or medicine room now these subjects of course is random you shouldn't be biased of picking your subject I only want to study Asian people or that guy so then it is random subject typically random and medicine typically is only one or two medicines are tested typically it's the medicine versus placebo so only two so that's fixed time is always fixed you cannot randomize time you cannot just say um, 8 o'clock 12 o'clock 12 o'clock 8 o'clock if it's 8 o'clock it's 8 o'clock so time is not possible to randomize so that's a fixed factor now look at this example instructor I'm teaching in a school so I'm nested within that university not difficult to understand species inside a pond not difficult to understand now sit back rest angle this study compares three different back rest angle on human comfort so it sets the experiment in three different backrest angles bring subjects and run them and then uh, it basically repeatedly measure their comfort level whether they feel comfortable or not and then you can see the exact same situation subjects are random they are nested in the seat angle so this factor definition random or nested they don't change in any of the example any of these 13 examples so you can just go through and kind of see uh, let me explain so here is an, another one ethnicity you cannot just randomly assign someone a particular ethnicity if somebody is from Asia that person is from Asia so it's, it has some distinctive characteristics we cannot just randomize ethnicity so all subjects when you are doing ethnicity study they are nested in the ethnicity if we are doing gender study all subjects are nested in the gender so these sub ethnicity gender they are not possible to randomize so subjects are always nested in there and the subjects are randomly picked so the the factor definition does not change it is random and nested meat marination this is an interesting example think about this if you marinate all your meat assume that you have a big bag plastic bag you put one type of marinade in that bag and then you got another bag you put another type of marinade in that bag and then put all your meat in that bag and then two of these bags that's easy compared to if you want to do completely randomized that would be you would have a small small bags and then completely randomize each of those bags put your treatment combination in that each of those bags small small bags and then put the meat in there like that so running the experiment that way would cost a lot instead of that you basically marinate in one batch all of them in one marination and then uh, you kind of use one particular cooking method and cook them so in this case we can see and then if you if you marinate many different types of meats part you can randomly pick one few of them and test them so it's the same factor definition does not really change now country reason education system let's say there are three different types of education system liberal arts regular college four-year two-year blah 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 so you want to test say two different education system liberal arts versus the regular technical degree so and then you want to see in different reasons maybe in the country you pick randomly a country can be divided into many different reasons maybe hundreds of reasons and then you can pick randomly pick two or three of them and see <coughs> how they are doing in terms of the 
education system. So again, this region is nested in the country and region is randomly picked. Same for the best supplier situation. Um, let's say the headrest. Um, some car company buys headrest from three different suppliers. So that's fixed, only three different suppliers. And then this supplier sends hundreds of batches to this car company. So it doesn't make so it doesn't make sense to test all these batches. You just randomly pick few of them and then test them. So that makes this batch random and then also nested uh, in the supplier. So that's just easy to understand. And if you want to see over time how their quality, how they're maintaining their quality, then that's the see, that can be called repeated measure. Now, any of these experiments, you could call them a split plot, a split. You could call them partly nested because you can see that factor B is nested, factor C is not nested. So this is a partly nested. And some of them you could call repeated when time is a factor. So this one can be called repeated, repeated. So any factor, anything that has time in it, we can call them repeated. Rest of them, we can call them a split plot, mix model, random effect model. It doesn't really matter, as I said before, how you call your baby in, in terms of the F statistics, P value, and they're all guided by what is the factor type and that defines their expected mean square. Expected mean square defines the F statistics. So as long as the definition of the factor doesn't change, uh, nothing changes. You can call whatever you want your experiments. Now, automaker model, think about that. Let's say you pick General Motors. I pick two of their car from General Motors and see how they're doing over time. So randomly, they produce a bunch of different models. I only pick two, so that's a random. And then, of course, automaker, GM, Ford, so only a few of them, so that would be fixed factor. And then the model comes from these different places. They are kind of nested in that particular uh, brand and then if I want to see over time how they're doing with respect to quality that makes them a, a repeated measure design now in the next example same thing I would just I'm just interested now in different types of fuel type how they work on different fuels let's say gasoline and ethanol um, is there any difference or something like that so if I'm studying that shouldn't be probably called repeated measure because um, again, if I measure the same car twice with two different fuel types, then we can call repeated measure. If I don't use the same car, then it shouldn't be called repeated measure. Then it should be called a split plot or partly nested. So you could call either of them. If you call them repeated measure, then people will think you have used the exact same car twice. Uh, and that is okay. Just, you know, if you call repeated measure, then people will understand that you use the exact same car twice to run this experiment. Uh, if you don't call repeated measure, they will think that you use a separate car for separate fuels, however, exact same car, maybe um, Toyota Camry, ethanol, and gasoline, how they uh, perform against these two. So basically, to summarize, there is no difference in any of these designs when it comes to the F statistics, P value, and expected mean square because all of them are guided by the type of factor. Is it fixed, random, and nested? To know how to do the correct F statistic, check the videos on the mean square table uh, that I've created. There are three different situations I have created, and if you learn that, basically the whole world can be um, kind of fit into that three different types of expected mean square. In the next video, I'll show you how to analyze this type of data in Minitab and SAS and SPSS.